factors we want to look at the modes of transmission of diseases so basically uh, in chain of infection you have seen that uh, you have the reservoir the source or reservoir and it has to reach the host so how will it reach the mode of transmission that is what they are asking you right so modes of transmission you just have to write two which are the two you have direct and indirect direct means you only touch something like you touch other human beings or you touch other animals or you touch some soil right that will be direct and even droplet infection they are saying is a kind of direct okay indirect means what will you have indirect means it will come to you via something like what will that something be it will be like um, water or it comes via air it could come via soil also that was also kind of uh, a vector bone right let us see these okay wait look at this guys modes of transmission of disease um, here they are telling direct direct you will only have contact like aids leprosy uh, skin contact eye contact etc okay so for this which example they have given aids leprosy etc then coming to droplet infection you have uh, corona tb common cold yes all those okay right contact with soil you will get hookworm right then inoculation directly it is inoculated that is more like a direct contact so you can think about rabies right um, hepatitis b via blood etc right hepatitis b is something like that right uh, it is directly inoculated into the skin of mucosa then transplacental guys from the mother to child means the feet is we are telling here so what and all can go the torch infections aids can go that is hiv teratogens in torch what is uh, torch full form guys right? uh, toxoplasmosis others rubella cytomegalovirus hiv is it hepatitis what is o there's actually the h in torch is referring to herpes simplex virus okay so remember toxoplasma rubella cytomegalovirus herpes simplex others in others they are putting varicella uh, syphilis etc gonorrhea also we can put here right what about hiv why didn't they put okay this is more like a um, teratogen right which caused this why didn't they put hiv here no we should include hiv here what do you say people so we are done with uh, uh, direct direct is over guys in modes of transmission direct is over direct means what you will directly touch somebody or you will have droplet infection which they are including in direct okay you will be so close to the person contact with soil you have touched some soil or you will have some dog come in bite you all the way and uh, transplacental but here they did not talk about animal contact why okay let's see let's go to indirect indirect they are saying vehicle bone that is why a water food blood three things they have mentioned here water okay food food will make it green what do you say so these are the vehicle bone water food blood okay we will come to that vector bone can be like why are these mosquitoes and uh, uh, okay bees okay airborne you have droplet nuclei dust okay fomite bone you have uncom uh, unclean hands that is animal why didn't they include animal in direct contact okay so anyways uh, i think uh, most of the diseases can come via milk and all that right so let us look at this vehicle bone which has all this food and all water So guys, we are done with direct. We are moving on to indirect. In indirect, we are going to vehicle. Vehicle, water, food. Together, they are saying staph aureus, typhoid, cholera, polio, hepatitis A, parasites also can come. Okay, cholera. Don't forget. Then polio is fecal oral route. It's an intestinal disease, right? Shall we proceed, guys. Uh, we are done with uh, this. Then blood. Why are blood? What diseases can you get? Uh, name some diseases. you can get you see what do they check the blood when you uh, donate blood what is it checked for they check it for hiv 1 and 2 they check it for hepatitis they check it for syphilis they check it for uh, malaria they check it for ch uh, chagas disease brucellosis so all these if they check i think they all are blood borne what do you say right so let us go to blood borne we'll write all that okay an organ transplant also can transmit uh, the disease so they are saying it is a vehicle borne thing organ transplant also is a vehicle bone what mode of transmission so guys we are looking at what mode of transmission and chain of infection the middle one what are we looking mode of transmission this is for communicable diseases right can we uh, give cancer from one person to the other only we can give the virus uh, which causes it probably but otherwise uh, diabetes can you give it to somebody else no so this is uh, this is a mode of transmission chain of infection mostly they are referring here to communicable diseases so we finished the direct then we are looking at we are looking at indirect right so in that vehicle bone we finished what is it after vehicle bone vector bone so air food water blood uh, leave all that why a vector a mosquito just comes and bites you and you get disease what is that now 
so that is kind of indirect right so it is vector bone so you have uh, flies mosquitoes ticks lice cyclops right these are invertebrates you can say kind of insects flies will transmit what diarrheal diseases mosquitoes anopheles malaria aedes will transmit what um, uh, dengue culex will transmit filariasis ticks will for, tra transmit what the casanur forest disease and then tick typhus and all that lice pediculosis cyclops will transmit the draconculiasis right uh, guinea worm you know the cyclops guys look at its uh, it has this one eye they are calling it a median eye something then what does it have some feathered filaments caudal fork it has abdomen or urosome thorax some segments it has one thing we can know one eye that is why it's called a cyclops right it is small pure shaped semi transparent creature just remember if somebody asks you to uh, um, tell the morphology or how will you recognize so basically it is an intermediate host um, look at this two important diseases transmitted by cyclops uh, as an intermediate host are guinea worm infestation draconculiasis and then you have diphylobothriasis this is fish tapeworm infestation so it will also give you a tapeworm infestation be careful this draconculiasis not that that big big deal now because it's eliminated from india but otherwise this diphylobothriasis you have to be careful okay fish tapeworm infestation coming from where from sites back people what are we looking at modes of transmission of disease in that we finished direct now we have uh, looking at indirect let's take a recap in direct what did we see direct we saw direct contacts contact with skin uh, uh, soil the dog comes and bites you inoculation then what else you had even droplet transmission indirect we are talking about vehicle bone now we are looking at vector bone uh, some more are there vector bone we are at now currently vector bone we finished invertebrates now look at vertebrates mice rodents bats what will you see for rodents plague is it um mice bats bats will transmit what lot of diseases they say it transmits this uh, transmits ebola and coronavirus etc okay rabies also then um, then you have mechanical and biological see basically in this vector bone you have mechanical and biological mechanical means they just carry things from one to the other place like flies right they are mechanical vectors biological vectors means they will uh, give place inside their body for these wait we need this agents that transmit infection in that you have biological vectors are true vectors in true vectors like biological vectors you have a female anopheles mosquito transmitting the uh, plasmodium uh, which causes malaria then you have the culex mosquito which is giving you the filariasis then you have the sand flies which spread kala azar tessi tessi flies which transmit uh, this uh, african sleeping sickness right they they uh, they actually give what to you they give Treponema, right? Treponema, gambines, gambines. Okay, whatever that is now. Redwood bugs, uh, they spread what? Uh, Chagas disease, ticks, babesiosis. Uh, so these are the ticks. They spread babesiosis. So these are the biological vectors. Then what else you have? Mechanical vectors like housefly. They will just physically transport them, right? What else we have in this? That's it. So vectors also we have looked at in vector uh, bone transmission, mechanical, biological. Trans ovarial, trans sterile. What is trans ovarial? Interestingly, it is within the uh, insects from its from the parent to offspring via the ovaries. In arthropod vectors, what is trans sterile? Sterile actually means stage. Okay, so uh, these insects go from one stage to the other stage, right? Like some uh, larva and adult and uh, nymph stage and all that. So from one stage to the other, the organism goes with the insect uh, with the organ with the what with the insect okay so that is transterial then now we are moving on to airborne airborne again here they are talking about droplet and dust okay so just dust you remember when you spoke about water food and all why we didn't talk about air air also we should have spoken of from air also uh, diseases can come to you like tb q fever or uh, q fever remember soil dust that's what it is right Hospital acquired nosocomial infection can come via dust. That's sad, right? You're just sleeping by yourself in the hospital and via the dust, the disease comes to you. Droplet nuclei, again here they're mentioning the same things like uh, tuberculosis, chicken pox, measles, measles and all, you know, right? Droplet infection, they are. So the next thing is fomite. See, fomite, they're saying, see, they didn't, they didn't put this in direct contact, right? It's more like you touch the towel of somebody else or use the towel of somebody else and you'll end up with some trachoma. 
possible. So, uh, that is uh, eye infection, skin infections, diphtheria. Diphtheria, how does it come actually? How does diphtheria spread? You are saying fomite. How exactly otherwise does it spread? That is actually a respiratory infection. So, it should be respiratory droplets. So, this does not fit here that much. What do you say? Even typhoid. Unclean hands, guys. Uh, fingers. You know how um, uh, fingers, they have auto inoculation of parasites, right? Uh, some children. Most common media is hand, hand. That's why hand washing can kill so many things. Staph, strep, typhoid, hepatitis A, everything. See, typhoid they are including everywhere. That's why it will transmit however it wants. Hepatitis A is food infection, so unclean hands. Okay, so we are done with um, modes of transmission, direct and indirect. Detailedly, we have looked at. Depending on the marks, you can write more, guys. Uh, just remember that uh, indirect means it is via flies, fingers, fomites, food fluid. Okay, <clears throat> so basically, if you remember, if you remember the sanitary barrier or sanitation barrier, in that from feces on one side to food on the other side, you have a lot of other F's, right? Look at this. You have feces on one side, right? You have feces on one side, and you have food on the other side, and man on the other side. So this is the sanitation barrier, primary and secondary. Two barriers are there. So, you have four F's here, fluid, finger, flies, fields. All these are kind of indicating indirect mode of transmission, right? So, you have the primary barrier and the secondary barrier so that you can protect your food from all this, right? So, that is sanitation barrier or sanitary barrier. So, if somebody asks you just the modes of transmission, you should say direct, indirect. Under direct, you have uh, directly touching things. Indirect, you have vehicle bone, vector bone, air bone, then fomite. Right? How many are there in that? And unclean hands. They are giving us the separate dimension for this unclean hands. Okay? 